Welcome to Indie Insights. My name is Highsight and this is Phantoms. So we jump right in, seeing what we see right here. And this is a mobile game, but I will be trying to use it as best I can with my mouse. So it looks like I can just kind of drag this little guy over the sparkles, and then he's over here now. And then I get a gem. And then I get this. It's not quite one-to-one -one with the simulator, it seems, but that's not a big deal. Tutorial! Alright, three gems. Next level. Very nicely polished, I gotta say. I really like this end screen, the way the gems kind of popped into place like that, the way it all just popped in. It's very... it's full of motion. It's very nice looking. Kind of a standard in a lot of mobile games these days. I'd say Angry Birds kind of populated or er, uh, popularized the entire level select with three gem style thing. But it's good formula. Especially for puzzle games. Level 1.1, Discover. Alright, red button. yellow button to drop that. Oh, now we got two guys. Okay. Kind of changes it up a bit. I was kind of thinking they might be moving at the same time, but I guess not. We'll get the green one here, blue one there, you go there. Oh, I missed one. Well, being the perfectionist I am. Ah, you see, you can actually drag the screen. That's kind of nice. They left this one just out of view, I think. And I think they did that on purpose. That way I didn't really notice it unless I dragged the screen up. I think it looked like that. Clever. I don't know if that was fully intentional, but hang on. Let's do this. You go here, you go there, take that, you take that, and... Wait. There it is. There we go. Simple enough. So I'm guessing, yep, this is going to get much more complex much quickly. And I'm okay with this. Yellow opens that, which opens this, which lets him go through. So you gotta kinda work in synchronicity if you wanna get anything done. Of course you can trap your guys in, can't you? Oh no, you can actually uh, press buttons at will? So if uh, one of your little guys is on it, I guess you can press it anytime you want. So now I have full control at any time, so right here I can press red. Right here I can press yellow. That's kind of a cool idea, actually. I like that. Get them to man their stations, and then you don't have to worry about moving them on and off like that. Good design. Good design. Alright, what do we got now? No level name, I see. Eh, it doesn't matter as long as they're on the little switches. I don't care where they go. So now you can hit boop, boop, boop. Get that there. Very simple little game. I gotta say, the sound design is very top-notch. I'm enjoying these little ethereal sounds going on here with the little echoey sound effects. It's nice. It all fits very beautifully. Circles. Put the circle, get the square. Oh, whoops. That was the exit. Now, I think the exit can be a little better defined. It's just kind of... Uh, it's a neat little particle effect, I guess, but it's not really especially good-looking, you know? It's just kind of there. It doesn't really signify to me that this is an exit, you know? Wait a minute. There we go. Pop that. Hmm, about that. Don't care about any of that. Hit the green guy. Hit the green guy again, because I screwed up. There it is. I feel like there could be a speedrun component to this game, you know? Maybe like a secret fourth gem. gem. A gem that you can only get if you complete it within a par time. Just a little something extra. Now, what have we here? These are different looking switches. And it looks like they cannot be pressed, but rather they can only be hit by moving past them. So we got two kinds of switches now. Oh. Didn't really expect that. I did see it happen in one other level, but I never really knew what triggered it. Let's uh, redo that. So what triggers that? It looks like whenever there are four dots like that... I feel like that could be, I mean, that could be just as simple as making the tile look like it's going to be destroyable, you know? Seems like it's a little uh, less obvious than it should be. Until you're on it. Hmm, but that won't work, will it? Because I have to pass through the exit. So how do I get those? Hmm. I think I see it. But maybe not. So I, I can clearly go down this way. But I can only go down that way once. And then I can't get over here. 
It's actually kind of a mind bender. So if we do that, I can make it kind of, because I can't, yeah, not without losing that. And once I lose that, I go here, I lose that. So I can get these, no problem. But then, and hell, I even trapped myself. Hmm, this is a good one. The trick is I can't go through here. I'm a fan. Yeah, I like the background too. It's very nice. I'd hope in future versions it might shift to different uh, different looks. This definitely works, but it could be, you know, more. You could definitely add a little more flavor right there. What I am seeing that's missing is a lack of real juice, you know? I mean, there's juice in the menus, but when we get to the actual thing, the most juice I see is the way the doors open and close, and that looks good. But there's no, like, real particle effects or anything going on that I could see, like, that disappears in a nice way. That's the best particle effect I've seen, actually, is the gem, right? So that's that's uh, something, but could be more, you know? So we can let him in here, we can grab these gems, no problem. But then it's really just a question of how on earth do I get to this one? Tricky! Yeah, there are two doors on the right path. Alright, I'm, I'm going to stop playing Perfectionist in a second, but uh, I do want to try this one more time. There are two doors here. If I go down into this way, then I basically lock myself from coming back out. If I go around this way, then I lock myself from getting back over here, because this path will be destroyed. It's actually quite the conundrum. I feel like there's a missing component here that I'm just not realizing. Like, if I go down this way, and then there's just no way back. Wait, why didn't that disappear? Oh, no, I, di I didn't see. There's no white there. Hmm. Tricky. Oh, wait, wait. I think it's way more obvious than I'm giving it credit for. Duh. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't click in my mind. There we go. And now my viewers know just how dumb I really am. That's weird. Are those one-time presses or something? So now we have buttons that are one-time presses, but they don't really indicate that. They look like normal buttons. How am I supposed to be able to tell that that can only be pressed one time? Hmm, interesting. Well, let's hit the red button first, then the blue button. Ah, oh, then there's no yellow button. Hmm, this one feels more like it's guess and check work, because you're not going to really know which buttons not to press immediately. Oops. Which buttons not to press immediately. Until it's too late. Yellow, and then... Green, which destroys all that. Hmm. So the blue one locks out the yellow one. And the red one... So it's gotta be yellow first, right? Yellow. Nope, because then yellow locks out the red. So, blue... Nope. So red, then yellow, then blue. There it is. Yeah, that's that's a little too guess and checky for me. Plus, there's real you need like a different look for those particular buttons that only go away immediately. Ah, I got little friends now. All right, so we'll put them on switch duty, I guess. And Okay. So it's only while they're on them that they're going to stay down, so... Go for the blue, but then the yellow. Put you there. You take that, you go on the yellow. Then you go on the green. You grab that gem. And then you go back on red. And we're free. So that's a much better puzzle than the last one. The locks one. I like that a lot. Order. Hmm. Now we got these yellow blocks, so let me guess if I touch this. Oh, they switch. Hmm. And these are one shots again. I'm not a big fan of the one shots, because then you kind of lock yourself out and you kind of have to restart if you want any chance of getting everything. And that's not quite as fun. Not to me, at least. Hmm. 
So if I press this, it's going to screw everything up, isn't it? Oh. Yep, the answer is yes. Yes, it will. Like, immediately. Because I need to get that green button now. I personally prefer my puzzles where I don't need a restart button. I'm not saying that that makes this like a bad puzzle game by any way, I'm just saying my own personal preference. I like them where you can kind of work your way out of things. So the green needs to... Wait, how's that even... Oh, wait, I see it. So the blue button... Yeah, that screws everything because then I can't get over there. So we can go back over here, grab that, let myself out, and then, hmm. I mean, I can definitely get out right now. That's not the issue. The issue is I want those other gems. If I grab that, if I grab that, then I can't get out because it's going to lock behind me, right? Eh, let's find out. Nope, actually, that's just fine. Alright, and I think that's all we have right now for this game. So, phantoms. Let's see. Oh, what's all this then? Are these different, uh, different people? Different percentages? Different what? Hmm, what have I just stumbled into? So, there seems to be a bit of a UI fail on this part because I have no idea what any of this is indicating. Oh, what? Are these just different user profiles? Is that what it is? Like, if I go here... Okay, so those are, I guess, different user profiles. Like, you can have different people playing the same game, I guess? I'm not quite sure. So I feel like this is probably where the UI is letting me down the most right now, is I just have no idea what any of this is. And this would be just as simple as putting up some text somewhere telling me what I'm looking at. Overall, I mean, this this game is a very beautiful aesthetic, both visually and audio -y. Obviously, I could use more levels, but what are you going to do? I mean, this is the alpha. We're going to get more levels as we go. But so far, I think it's on the right track. I think it's a very beautiful game. I think it's something that would definitely appeal to some people who are just looking for a very simple, very simple game. A very simple puzzle game of sorts, you know? The menu system is very nice. It's very well animated. Don't know what that info is supposed to do, but it looks like I can break the game with it. Look at, look at all those X's. Look at all those X's. Oh, I should have done that. <laughs> Ah, should not have done that. There we go. But anyway, aside from the fact that I just totally broke the game, which is, hey, what alphas are for, it looks really good. I think it's a very nice looking game, and I think it can definitely uh, pull in a good audience with these kind of puzzles. Simple, but enjoyable. So that's Phantoms, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for submitting this forward.